Good morning. My name is Laisiana Kukunovo and currently I'm a second year student of the Fiji National University. And today I will be presenting on the movie Whale well Rider, which is authored by Witi Ihimayara. And before we begin with our presentation, I would like to brush through with the post-colonialism on the country of New Zealand, the natives of Maori. New Zealand was colonized in the year 1840s by the Europeans, where they settled in Wellington, which is situated on the North Island of New Zealand. So when uh, post-colonial happened, people, they had to fight to gain over a land and to colonize that particular country for them to gain success and also devastate the island and the nation for good. During the, colonial, during the colonialism, there were positive and negative effects of colonialism. The positive effects of colonialism is that they had improvement of, of infrastructure in New Zealand. They had transportation that goes on land, on sea, and especially on air. Also, they had influx of Western foods that were introduced. There were no more foods coming from the land. More foods were brought from abroad. Also, they will had an influx of Western ideas with clothing and education. But the negative effects of colonialism is that the natives, they had degradation of resources, they had spreads of diseases. Also, the most importantly, they had loss of their land, of their native land. And also, they had to change in their lifestyle, their culture, especially their ways of eating. And our author, Witi Tame Ihimaira Smaila. He was born the 7th of February in the year 1944 in Waitui, Gisborne, New Zealand. Our author is known as he's a novelist, a storyteller story writer. Also, he is an anthologist, meaning he reads books from other, other authors' collections and then he develops them into their own ideas. And also, this author, he writes to uphold his tradition, his cultures, and his views about colonialism. So here, in our presentation, we'll be discussing what is his view on this, on this movie, which is the real writer. First of all, before we begin with the presentation from question 1 to question 4, I would like to brush us through with a whale, a symbolism in Maori culture. So a whale, to a people, to the Maori people, it's a, it is an indication to a, pride, to a tribe that it should settle in that particular place. That means, if the Maori settlers that in a particular place, when they see a whale swimming near the seas, they will know that that place is a given place for them. Okay, moving on. The next one, they are the descendants of Tangaroa. Also, the whale symbolizes the personal change and spiritual growth. We will go through in the presentation, then we will discuss about the personal change and spiritual growth that happened to our character, Paitia Apirana. Also, the whales. Whales, they are a symbol of pure spirits. They are also a sign of good luck if seen swimming in the sea. And also, finally, the whale, it is uh, both associated with life and death. So that means if they see a whale swimming in the sea during the morning and also in the evening or in the daytime, it is a symbol of life and death. Moving on to question number one. We will look at the major characteristic of Maori culture, which is patriarchal. Patriarchal is a system of society of government in which the fathers or the eldest male is the head of the family or the descendants. Okay. In, this, in this novel, the portrayal of Maori culture, we see the bond of Paikia. Paikia Apirana, our, our main character, she is a girl. She is a girl and also... In this, uh, in this patriarchal society, a girl cannot be given the head, a chiefly title, in the Maori, in the Maori culture. She was born to him with a brother who passed away when, when during an accident, also, and she was stricken, being stricken by her grandfather, Kora Apirana. And then we we'll look at Porurangi, Pai's father. But his father was supposed to be the new leader of the tribe and he lives in Germany with his new family and he didn't want to leave the old ways and he was especially, he was drawn to abstract art, meaning he was more interested in the modern ways than in the traditional ways. And then we look at the patriarchal society, the patriarchal culture in their culture, their family tree. We have Koro Apirana marrying Nanny Flowers, resulting with two kids, Bororongi and Rawiri. But Rawingi, we all know that he is drawn to abstract art 
and also Rawiri. Rawiri is his second son and he was not given the chiefly title because of his birth order. Resulted in him, he represented the middle role, the modern and the old ways. That means Rawiri he is much more interested in the modern world. But regarding culture and tradition, he knows very well, especially in the novel, whereas in the novel he taught uh, Paikia the Tahia. The Tahia, uh, that is the fighting, the war, when they had during uh, the olden days. And also we have Paikia, Paikia Apirana, and uh, she is the chosen one. She is the chosen one, but his grandfather lacks interest in her because she's a female and she, and she cannot take up the role of being the chief. And so moving on to question number two, the similarities between the Maori culture and the Itoki culture. First of all, Maori culture, they are known as voyages, meaning they travel on waters, either through ship or through the whale, that by Kaapirana, their ancestors, came in. Also in Fiji, in Itoki culture, they are also voyages. They travel on waters, they came in Rakao Mitoni. And traditional arts, second up on the list, traditional arts, Maori people, they do weaving, carving, oratory, tattoo, and many others. And Itoki culture, they also do weaving. They do printing, they do carving, and also they do oratory. Oratory is done by the elders, the elder people in the family. Also the language. Maori people, they use their own language known as Te Roya Maori, and whereas Itoki culture, they use their Vosa or the dialects, which means there are 14 districts, 114 districts in the island of Fiji, with they having different language and different dialects. Also moving on, the food. Where they cook their food, they cook food in earth oven. But Itoki people, they also cook food in the earth oven that is known as the lovo. Warfare, they all, they have their haka. When we see them, uh, especially we see the servants play before they play, they have haka. Also warfare by the Itoki people, they also do dhimbi. It's known as dhimbi. Leadership, in Maori culture, they had family kinship, as we already discussed over here. All the males, only the males are given this title and also in the Itoki culture we have also family kinship that means only the males in the family uh, have the right to the chiefly title the cultural concept we have greetings and serving for also Itoki we have cultural concept as greeting and serving the preservation how many people they are preserving their cultures they are teaching their children how to preserve the culture especially the, as we see in the movie that Koro Apirana, he was teaching the small boys to fight, teaching them their warfare, teaching them their language and their traditional arts. And also in the Ituki culture, how they, they have come about in preserving their culture. They have Ituki subjects taught in schools. They also have Fiji celebrations and other celebrations. Moving on, question number three. We have the gender and leadership coming to terms with survival, determination and hope. In the novel, in the novel or in the movie, The Will Rider, Survival, we will look at our main character, which is Paika Apirata. So before we brush through this, let's look at her speech. Her name is Paika Apirata, she says, and I come from a long line of chiefs stretching all the way back to the Hawiki. I am not a prophet, but I know our people will be going forward all together with all our strength. So everybody can learn and become leaders. And not just the one chosen, since knowledge is given to everyone, like leaders who are chosen, they can also fall and are weak. Like Paikia, our ancestors, when he was lost at sea and did not know what to do, but he realized to call the Asian ones, those are the whales, and they came and lift him up. From this statement, this is, a, this is Paikia Apurana's speech, and also it's a token of deep love to her grandfather, Koro Apurana, which she was waiting for him to come on her graduation day which he never came up, and from this speech, we come to terms with survival, hope, and determination. When we look at Paikia, Paikia, she survived the patriarchal leadership. That means she survived whatever leadership, whatever challenges her grandfather is teaching the small boys, she survived, she survived of those. She survived the, the, the war fighting, she survived swimming in the sea, going down deep blue sea, and she also survived in the final scene when she rode on the whale. Also, she survived the culture and the anger. We can say that she also survived the accident and also the danger of lives. 
Okay, question number two, determination. Determination, why can Aprana, she was determined that she is going to be inheriting the next uh, chief title because she, in herself, she's determined that she is the next kid. She also, she was determined also that she will overcome the grief, the grief of the loss of her own twin brother. Also, she was determined that she will change the views of the people. So we can see that in this society, in the Warren society, the people, they only know as male. They all know that the male are the only descendants of the chiefly title and no one else apart from the chiefly title. Those are males. Also, she was determined that one day she will call the whale and she will read in the whale, as we have seen in the movie. And our final theme, which is hope. Hope, she was hoping to be the new leader of the tribe and she was determined that she was the new leader. Also, hope she was every leader. She hoped that every leader can fall one day. And also, she was hoping her grandfather will change his views about her after the speech. So, in this, uh, in this speech, we can see that uh, Pai, uh, Paikia Apirana, she had a lot of challenges to overcome in order for her to change her grandfather's views about her. Moving on, the, com the um, other modern uh, day cultures. So, we have taken our culture, so our patriarchal structure in the Itoki leadership. Also in Itoki leadership, it's divided into four. Firstly, we have the Vanua, known as the tribe, situated by the two, which is known as the clan, the Avusa, Matangali, the lineage, and the Tokutoka, sub-lineage, or the extended family. So in Itoki culture, we also have the patriarchal leadership in Itoki culture. That means males are predominantly they are the leaders of the family. Also, uh, males, when they are the leaders of the family, they have the authority and the decision-making of any family. So, in any family in the Itoki culture, they have shared responsibilities in the families and the tribe and also <coughs> the society. Okay. For the male Itoki in the Itoki culture, they, they should listen to other votes and other, uh, other peoples from any personal in the family, tribe, and the society before deciding on a certain act. So that means in this uh, novel, we can see the similarities between the Maori culture and the Itoki culture. Nothing changes, but Itoki culture, they have a very firm leadership in the family regarding the male as the role model and as the leader of the family. So through this movie, we can bring out that uh, there are many societies nowadays in Fiji that have fallen apart, especially in a family, whereby there's only a female leading the family with all the kids. We only see the woman get uh, married and um, husbands are dead, they are divorced, and the woman will have to take up the responsibility in raising up the children. So that is what has happened here. Instead of uh, Paikia's father passing away, we have... Um, uh, Paike's mother resulted in the accident. So I hope you have understand all of this concept. Then we have to come to a conclusion. And I will read up uh, what the whale, what the whale writer has portrayed us. It has given us the powerful message about leadership title, and also it has teaches other leaders that every person has the knowledge of leadership. That means not only leaders they can be leaders. There are other peoples also who are also known as leaders and they could lead a particular a particular tribe a nation or a family also the post-colonial views that women are to be based on their own territory but right now it's different because uh women are not only told to stay in the kitchen but they are also loved by their husbands and their family and also finally with concluding uh, with a quote the chase from Paikia, that one must never give up when striving for success and go. So that's it for our presentation. And I hope that uh, we all have a blessed weekend. Thank you.